All right, let's jump into chapter four, which is linear regression. This chapter will be a little bit different um, because we're gonna look at two or more variables rather than, so far we've kind of been looking at one variable at a time. So professionals often wanna know how two or more numerical, so they both have to be numerical, and so we'll have two variables, both numerical. So no categorical variables in this chapter. Um, so maybe we want to see, is there a relationship between the grade on your second exam um, and the grade on your final? So those would be my two variables, grade on second exam, grade on final. And then if there is a relationship, what is that relationship and how strong is it? So these are questions we'll answer as we go through the chapter. So let's start with linear equations. So they're going to look similar to what you saw in algebra. You probably saw y equals mx plus b. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap the order. Notice I rewrote it as y equals b0, so that's b, plus b1x. And there's reasons for that. If you keep studying statistics, you add more and more variables. Um, but it's the same thing, just in an opposite order. Um, so if we don't remember, m was slope in algebra. So b1 is our slope. Uh, right, the letter doesn't matter. Just the one in front of x is slope. And then the extra number, the, it's called a constant, the one outside by itself, was our y-intercept. And we'll do some examples shortly. Um, we also call x the independent variable. Um, it's kind of like our input, meaning it can kind of be anything. It's independent. It has its own choices, basically. Um, or sometimes we call it the predictor in stats class. Um, so can it make a prediction about y? And then y is dependent on x, so we call it dependent, or we call it the response, right? Response kind of makes sense with output. It's the response to some something. So x is our input or predictor, and then y is our output or response, which relates to the response variable back from chapter one. So I'm going to do a quick review of graphing. If this is not a review, I'll share some videos to get more practice. Um, we are not going to graph um, by graphing the intercept and like counting. We're going to use tables and statistics instead mainly because we're going to get usually uglier numbers. So this is called the table method. It'll be much more useful in statistics than any other method you learned. And when we get into actual examples with stats, it'll make more sense. So I'm just going to plug in a couple numbers. Um, so maybe negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we can always plug in more or less if we want to. So we just plug those in. So y equals 3 minus 2x. So y equals 3 minus 2 times negative 1. Um, you can do that by hand, or we can just plug it in all at once, save some time. 3 minus oops, 2 times negative 1, right? So minus sign, negative sign, they're slightly different. So that's 5. And then if you hit second enter, you can just type over and not have to retype everything. So if we plug in zero, we get three. Second enter, notice, and then I can hit arrows, just change the zero to a one, and we get one. So just plugging in numbers, two, we get negative one. There is no reason I chose these x values. You could choose three, four, or five, you can choose anything. You could choose 100, but then I have to graph 100, so I didn't want to go that far. So let's plot these and they should make a line. So x is left to right, so negative one, five would be negative one, and then one, two, three, four, five. So that would be right here. So it's like those points. The next one would be zero, three, which means we don't go left or right, we just go up three, one, two, three. And then one, one means we go over one, up one, and then two negative one means we go over two and we go down to negative one. And they should make a nice straight line. And we'll go ahead and connect them. 
and that's how to graph a line. So we'll do more examples when we get into the statistics. This is just a refresher. And then slope was the, in this example, was negative 2. That's my slope. So slope tells us things depending if it's positive or negative. So positive slope goes upward. We call those increasing lines. This one went downward because it was a negative slope. So we call that a decreasing line. And the steepness might change depending on the slope, but positive always goes up from left to right and negative always goes down left to right. And then the last case that we'll cover is zero and that makes a flat line. It just basically means there's no change. It's staying constant. So let's try to interpret slope. So we're gonna make this, this isn't algebra class anymore, right? Statistics is more analyzing data. So we're gonna interpret the slope. So the slope, you do not need to know the formula for slope in this class, but I'm reminding you of it um, because it'll make the definition make sense. So in algebra, we learned that slope is m, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We are not using the formula, but it will help us understand the interpretation. So what does this mean? y2 minus y1 means change in y. The difference represents change, and then the denominator would be change in x. And then this was equal to the slope, which I am going to rewrite m as m over 1. Right? Any number we can write over 1, and this will help us interpret it. So we'll notice that the x's are changing by 1's. Change in x is 1. So for each um, additional 1 unit of the x value, so I will change that to whatever my variable is. And I'll also change unit to match, again, what my variable is. Then the y value is changed by m. And then change will be increasing or decreasing, which we'll decide as we do examples. Um, by the slope. So let's try one so we can make sense of this. So we have the cost of throwing a birthday party at a popular kid center is given by the formula C equals 50 plus 10K. So C is my cost and K is the number of kids and we want to interpret the slope. So slope is always the one in front of the variable so the slope would be 10 here. I like to write it as 10 over one and it'll be change in y over change in x. So in this case, my x is k, because k is next to it. So change in kids is on the bottom for k. And then my y is the one outside, so that would be cost, change in cost. I'll just put dollars. So basically, this is telling me for each one kid, the cost goes up by $10. So by writing this formula out, it helps you write the sentence. So for each additional kid, that's my x unit is kids, right? So we're not gonna write unit of x, we're gonna write each additional kid. And we're not gonna write the y value, we're gonna say the cost, right? The y value is cost here. The cost increases by $10, right? Why is it increasing? Because the slope is positive. So I'll see you in the next video.